Hello again, and welcome back to Advanced Minecraft. Uh, today's lesson is uh, brought to you by uh, experience of uh, right freaking now. Uh, I wanted to bring something that I had done on a different machine uh, over to the machine which I record the Minecraft videos. And in order to do that, I found out that you need to know a lot about how Minecraft is doing things under the hood. Uh, most people who play Minecraft will only interact with the minecraft.exe file that they download or even the Java applet. But what I've got here boink, is uh, a uh, little instruction on how to get your save files and move them from one machine to another. And I'm going to do this fairly quickly because it's not the core thing that I wanted to present today, but uh, I wanted to show you something that I had done in a different world on a different machine. Uh, first, you got to turn on your hidden folder, hidden file uh, view. Now you can find out how to do this uh, online. It's different for every type of operating system. I happen to have Vista, so you know a quick search in Google turned up how to do it. Um, but what you're going to do is, um, although it's different on certain machines, uh, most of the time it's in the users folder, and then under your name, and then there's a folder here called App Data, and it's hidden, and that's the one that you need. Uh, I've noticed it called Application Data on my other machine. Uh, under this one, I went to Roaming, although again, it's a little different on the machines, but you can find this folder, .minecraft. So if you've got your uh, machine settings to search for hidden files and folders, uh, and then you can view them in the, the window here, you're, you should be able to find this .minecraft folder. And in there is everything that you're going to need, including the saves for your worlds. From there, you can just zip it up, copy it onto a, a thumb drive, move it from one machine to the other. Um, and you'll notice there's a whole slew of you know random data folders in there. But that's basically it. That's how you move uh, your save file from one machine to another, take it with you, put it on your laptop, share it with a friend, etc., uh, etc. Et uh, that is you know, something you might find useful, something an advanced Minecraft player might need to know. Uh, so, let's go on with today's lesson. <laughs> uh, world 3. I just moved it over. Here's one of many things uh, that I'd like to teach you guys. You'll notice, uh, due to a bug, I assume it's a bug because it makes no sense, um, in the Minecraft code right now, certain blocks will never burn down. And this is great for creating uh, defenses and, you know, cool little effects like little, you know, funeral pyres or what have you. Uh, but up here, for example, I've got these defenses outside my keep. Right now I think I've got this, yeah, okay, I've got the difficulty on, right? Um, random creeps will wander close to it, catch on fire, burn to death, and leave behind ham and feathers and whatnot. Uh, and also the uh, more dangerous denizens like that skeleton will catch fire if they walk too close. And these are much better than simply putting a cactus out there or something like that because when they catch fire they'll take damage for a longer time. Uh, so I'm going to show you how to do it. Uh, first you got to have flint and steel and hopefully you guys know how to make flint and steel but I'll quickly run over it. Um, you craft it, you can do it in your basic inventory by putting a piece of uh, steel here and a piece of flint here and then boom you get your flint and steel. And you get I'd say 60 or so uses out of it uh, before it dies. Um, certain blocks will burn extremely easy and other ones uh, won't burn at all. But I find that a plank of wood is perfect for this. Uh, I should probably only use one. Alright, just point at the top and light it on fire with right click. Sometimes it'll fail and the wood block will burn to the ground. Alright. Uh, see how the fire spreads to the side, just put it out. That seems to help keep it alive. And I think this one worked. I think we're going to have a permanent on-fire work there. Whoa! <laughs> Surprise me. Yes, you like my fire. Now you're going to die. I should not be doing this. It is a bad idea. And also awesome. There you go. It's permanent. You can build a whole fortress with these, protecting it. And the mobs will run up there and die horribly. Uh, and that is an excellent advanced tip for you guys. Um, because killing monsters without having to do anything is one of the most important uh, tools at your disposal here. Now I'm going to turn the uh, difficulty down to peaceful because I want to show you guys some other neat little tips and tricks here. And also show you guys something cool that I built because I did get a request uh, to see something neat. 
uh, and uh, you know, I'd love to show you guys something that I've been working on. And uh, hint, hint, it has to do with spheres because someone else asked about spheres. You'll notice I have this loop here, a little loop of iron track. Uh, and what this is for is to give myself infinite speed when I am in a cart. Now you can go ahead and build yourself a mine cart with a um, furnace and then put a second minecart in the middle and a third one which you ride in in the front and it'll take you all the way up a hill and whatnot. Um, but this here is a neat little uh, bug, uh, just like the, the burning wood, uh, having to do with minecarts. Now I should caution you, you, sh you need to have a lot of iron before doing this because you will lose these minecarts if you don't get back here quickly enough and disassemble them. Ah, there we go! All four minecarts have kind of merged together, and they're just going to keep going around and around and around until they break. And when they break, they're just going to disappear. They won't even leave anything behind. So you got to be quick if you want to get them back. Otherwise, it's going to cost you 20 iron to do this. But, pachoom! There you go. I've been hit by the minecarts. They bump me, and they're going to give me enough speed to go up any amount of ramp, no matter how much speed I had when I left. I can go all the way up these stairs without stopping, and I'll slam into the wall. Boom. Ta-da! Now, here's what I wanted to show you guys, something I, I spent many an hour on uh, on my laptop. Uh, I'm working on some geometric shapes. I got a little diamond there, and I was working on like a pyramid there, inverse pyramid. And here's a perfect sphere using a what do you call them? Voxel, voxels, kind of like pixels, only in cube form. And uh, I will link uh, in the description to this video the uh, forum page which gave me the information to do this. This is a 30 diameter perfect sphere uh, from top to bottom, and it took I think about 500 dirt, and it is completely hollow. And uh, I also built the ceiling out of glass so that you can see a little bit in the dark. And uh, you'll also notice that I've rigged up some serious circuitry at the bottom here. Uh, this is a rotating five clock, which I'll explain in a minute, hooked up to just a bunch of redstone that leads to the outside, where we've got some torches, uh, redstone torches, that will blink. And uh, from the bottom, and this is by no means complete, I just uh, figured I had enough to show you guys the basic concept. You'll see that it blinks like that. It's like a damn Christmas bulb. Uh, disco ball here. Isn't that awesome? I knew it was awesome. You guys can do this too. It's really not that difficult. Um, especially if you put on peaceful mode and don't mind falling every so often. Although, uh, with the shift ability to crouch and creep, you don't ever have to fall. But I, you know, I'm careless. And let's go up to the second floor. <laughs> That's where I'll show you how the rotating five clock works. Now, I've got another tutorial uh, in my videos about this. Uh, about how to set up an alarm actually and rotating five clocks part of that but it doesn't have any sound so I'll explain it here uh, what a rotating five clock is is you've got f you've got the basic system of a redstone leading into a block providing power to that block uh, which then provides the torch and uh, let me pull this away normally this is how it happens redstone has no power goes into a block the block has no power if you put a torch on the outside of the block, it will invert whatever is inside. So we got no power here, power there, which then gives this redstone power, and it's glowing and sparkling. So the powered one goes into this block, and then again, inverse, so the torch here has no power. And you continue this little setup, power, no power, power, until you get back to the one at the beginning. And you'll notice that we're going to relink it, causing this to gain power. When it does, it immediately switches this one off, which switches this one on, which switches this one off, and so forth, in a loop. And because it's looping, and uh, you can only do this with five or more, any less than that, and it's too quick, it just selects one to be default. Because it's looping like that, it gives the uh, illusion of a sort of a blinking, flashing thing. And then, of course, you just link one strand out to something else, and you can power whatever you want. And a rotating five clock is how people set up an alarm. They also include sort of a switch to take control over it because redstone works in a sort of, it's difficult to describe because I'm, I'm not really an expert on it, but whatever's there first takes control and keeps it. Uh, and in this case, the, the five clock here is, is rotating control. 
Um, but if you put like a powered torch here, right, let me see if I can maybe do this. Got it. If I put a powered torch here, bam, it's going to keep control and it disables the five clock. If I take it away, they'll go back to spinning around like that. Anyway, you link them into your blocks, which are powered, and then outside there, I can't really, here, I'll show you. Oh, <laughs> guess not. Uh, outside of that is the, uh, the torch on the outside of the sphere, which will then blink. Uh, so that's it for this episode. I just wanted to show you guys a little bit about the file system and uh, show off my giant uh, Voxel sphere. And remember, if you're interested in building your own perfect sphere, uh, check the, uh, let's see, there it is, in and out. Uh, check the link that I'm going to post in the uh, description. And remember, as always, if you guys have questions or comments uh, about the videos, or if you'd like to see me do something uh, for you, to help you guys uh, in survival single player, uh, please go ahead and post. I welcome all posts equally. I love them as my own children. And uh, we will see you next time on Advanced Minecraft with Dr. Zombie. Whee!